working with the energy of Isis. Channeling Isis. Hi and welcome to video blog 12, Isis's channelings. Um, so when I psychically tune on to her, I see a very tall lady with an athletic build, very strong upper body, uh, very muscular in the upper body, but very, very thin legs. Um, I see golden blonde hair, like a honey blonde hair with some golden streaks through it. Uh, fair skin, uh, very sharp face with very high cheekbones, blue colored eyes. Uh, yes, not like the pictures at all, the pictures that you've been shown or what you've been programmed to think of the likeness of her is actually not how she comes through at all. And I did ask her why she looked so different to what I would have thought she looked like. And she said we should never assume anything um, just because people have this image of her it doesn't make that image right plus she said she can come through um, looking different for different people so you would resonate with her and you would feel comfortable with her um, her energy when she comes through is very very dominant um, you can feel very royal energy when she talks um, she has a very firm and strong and demanding respect kind of a voice, deep and husky. Um, she comes across as regal, authority figure, mysterious and oozing um, sexual confidence. Um, she does smile, but it's not like a belly laugh. It's very like mm, mm, half a... Uh, smile sort of thing half a uh, mouth smile is the best way to describe it um, she talks with grace and strength of character she holds you at attention and a third grasp around you so you can feel like you're standing on attention and you're really listening and you're like uh, not standoffish but you're like um, under her power I would kind of say you would uh, feel very small around her because her energy is just absolutely booming if you talk about vibrational level her level is quite high almost very similar to an archangel's vibration um, but she's just very commanding and um, she, she says things as a state of fact and not like look into it or this is a possibility or what are you getting or what do you feel she tells you as it is basically um she's very very strong in female energy it's it radiates a lot of pink around her when she talks pink with golden flakes within it um she states as a matter of fact as i said she's the first female star being um, to be brought here to Mu, which I believe Mu is Australia. Um, she's, she was original, she was the original Earth Mother, as she keeps saying. Gaia is one of her names. Um, she says she has 10,000 names, but she was the original Earth Mother here to look after Earth and to put the female energy into Earth. Um, so she said with legends she has been called so many names and they go on and on and on. Um, she says she loves all of those names because all of those suit her different personalities and her different characters. Um, she keeps telling me she's from Sirius C and the dog star is her, um, where her family is from but she resonates in Sirius C. Um, and she uses the dog star a part of the astral traveling or a part of the connecting in with people um, there's a big council that's on the dog star and so she's very familiar and very at home on the dog star as well um, there's a temple on Sirius C called the temple of Isis and she said that is her home and that's where she does her practicing and that's where she sends out her energy um, that's where she does all of her initiations. Uh, she shows me a, a floor, a tiled floor that's black and white. 
um, and it's in beautiful patterns and uh, very big huge columns all made out of gold um, she shows me a beautiful altar with white marble with gold streaks through it she shows me these beautiful marble bowls um, as well that she lays in and she does things in um, yeah she's definitely got high priestess energy but I, I would say she's the highest of all the high priestess um, so if you're working with high priestess energy it's important to call her in and ask for permission um, to access all the other high priestess because even though she's there and she runs a lot of the things in the temple she also has a lot of high priestess around her that she's trained and initiated who do a lot of the work for her also and that's what she did on earth as well she taught people to become the high priestess and what a high priestess was all about and initiate them and help them and give them the um, ancient knowledge to be able to do things um, she came here on a light craft. She's telling me it wasn't a spacecraft. It was a light craft. It was all made out of crystals. It was all made out of the liquid vibration. Um, so she said it it wasn't metallic. Um, she keeps calling it the light craft. Um, she also agreed to come down here. The councils from above. Um, came to her in the Isis temple at Sirius C. She also says there's three temples down here in Australia that are also called the Temple of Isis and three of the main ones where she's actually been actually asked for these temples to be built actually did her work in them and she calls one of them the Maiden Temple and one of them the Mother Temple and then one of them the Crone Temple so in this presentation you will see where she was telling me what was what in the temples. She also tells me there is a temple here in the ether and that is the exact replica of the one on Sirius C and she says only the high priestesses here or the ones that are doing the extreme work with her and connected in with her get to go there in their visions and meditations and astral traveling and she says you can remote view it so if you want to do some remote viewing you can do that um, you could ask in meditations to be taken there and see if you get granted permission to go um, so there's definitely one here in the ether and um, so there's a lot a lot happening with her energy down here more than we realize um, just on a quick note of that when I first started working with her, I thought, okay, I'll work with Goddess Isis. Okay, she's coming through. She's coming through for a reason. Okay, I'll open up this communication. And then I said to my angels, can you please confirm that I am actually working with Isis and that it is here to help Australia with her energy? And I got called into the school for my daughter. And so I stopped the meditation and I drove to the school and as I walked into the office there was all of these statues, trophies in the corner and I was drawn to them because I know my daughter competed in cheerleading and I thought oh they must be the trophies have arrived and I looked down at these cheerleading trophies and right on top of all of the trophies was goddess with her big golden wings so I was like, okay, thank you angels for that confirmation thank you Isis, yes I know you're with me and obviously she works with a lot of teenage girls, um, getting them to express their love and their self-esteem through dance and through cheerleading and being placed into the school energy um, to help bring in the dominant females. And that's what makes me think um, how much these teenagers have changed and become so strong and so independent and and you know sexually active very early and um, want to be with all their friends and and just have grown so much from my days and then my mother's days we've got a whole new completely uh different race of teenage girls happening out there and i think isis has a lot to do with that with her energy being around the school and her energy being around um earth and people connecting into her now more often and trying to bring out those female lines we're causing that undercurrent to run through our own teenage girls and through the own teenage population 
So we have to teach them how to be in balance with Isis energy. Not only is she so powerful and dominant and sexual and everything else, but she's also filled with grace and she's also filled with love and she's also filled with grounding. So we've got to balance out her energy within these girls, teach them how to work with Isis, but teach them all the aspects of Isis. So they become a very well-balanced teenagers and hopefully into less stuff than they should be. Um, so where was I? Oh, about the Council of Hyatt came down to her Isis in the Temple of Isis and they gave her an offer. They made her an offer. She said she didn't have to do it. It was her choice, but they made her an offer. They said, if you go down to this new earth, um, you can live there. We will let you stay in your physical body more than your light body and you will learn how to bring the feminine line there into earth and you will be the first female and you'll be the ruler and um, then we will get you a companion who will come down and you will build civilizations and you'll create a family and you'll create gods and goddesses and you'll be known throughout history for your energy and your presence and your worth here and of course she agreed. <laughs> um, she wanted to be in charge and she wanted to help Mother Earth and bring in the female lines. And she saw it as a great opportunity to use all of her skills and all of her ancient knowledge and all of her equipped magic that she had um, to bring down to Earth and see what she could actually do with it all. So she was brought down by the Lightcraft and she came down and the first place she landed on was a place called the Garden of Eden, which is in Australia near Kakadu and um, or near Ezrock, I think it is, but Kakadu is also related to this as well. Um, and then the council also went to Osiris, who lives in the playlist. And they said to him, we want you to have a partner, we want you to procreate, we want you to be the king of the lands, we want you to help with the underworld there and with the death processes where Isis was about rebirthing and he was about death. And that you and her would be in perfect balance and work together, you would be like a brother of kin um you know and so he was convinced also to come down so she arrived first he arrived next and of course they made babies and off came the population of australia um she also wanted to come down so much because she knew it was going to be an experiment that the council on high was doing and she knew she'd be the first representative here she also knew that that would help with the council members to get her higher in the council so together with the counterpart which is osiris they would learn about emotions and introduce gods and goddesses and learn about sexual appetite within the physical body and not within the light bodies um, they would also help build the first civilizations very similar to to what they have in their own homes um, they were to create portals and alignment so um, each member may return home to the stars so it was all a part of um, how they would get back um, because i think that light ship that life craft went down and so they didn't have um access to get back to their home um also the other representative was isis as i said but i'll get into more into him in another time yes another presentation heaven forbid woo um on isis and his energy what he's here for um he became isis's lover brother in arms on a mission together they traveled and spread the energy of pyramids and tombs and civilizations to as many places as they could uh, one goal in the mission was to mine gold, to build a golden plate um, for which they would use to travel on the ley lines on the world matrix grid to, the, to these different civilizations that they were building in a faster and more efficient way. Um, yes, Adam and Eve, it sounds very similar to Adam and Eve. Are you saying, oh, were they Adam and Eve? Uh, well, that's the Christian name for them. Uh, but the energy of Is Isis and Osiris is everywhere. Um, the Apostle Timothy is also Thoth, and Moses is also Horus, um, and so on and so on and so on. Um, 
that the Bible was the Chinese whispers of the Sumerian tablets, just as we do today. We have different names for gods on this earth. It's the same person, just the same person with the same energy, just a different name. So it relates to that culture, it relates to that people and they can resonate. So just as she comes through to me as fair skin and golden blonde hair, but she'll come to others as a really warrior woman with black hair. So um, yes, they can change presences. Yes, they can shape shift into different human forms. Um, so to me, that's the same thing. They shifted into human form into an Adam and an Eve. Um, where they were Isis and still Osiris. So, same thing. Um, do, 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 do. What else would you like to say? So, she's going on again about the temples of Isis that are here on Earth. She's telling, you, telling me two have already been found. And the last one, the Maiden Temple, is located in Central Australia. It is very close to being found that people are exploring around a civilization there, but in the surrounding areas, which has not yet been uncovered by archaeologists, right in the middle of that area, in the dig site, they will come across the Temple of the Maiden. Um, this will be one of the greatest uh, finds um, and everybody will want to see it and be near it. It has to be protected, it has to be honoured and only the right people should be able to go on to this dig site and um, feel its energy and work with it because there's a lot to be activated within the temple so it will work properly. Um, it's kind of just like in, in pause mode. Uh, I don't get energy from it. I get that it's just stagnant. Um, so the right people, a lot of uh, reincarnated high priestess will have to go back there and work with the whole area there and just get it to turn on and get it to be activated again and align the female back in there. Um, so if you want to work with her, um, you have to be very, very grounded working with her because it's such high and dominated energy. You can lose your mind sometimes and it, it does take a while to uh, shake it off when she comes through. And, and every time I have this little thing in my head that I do, after she goes through, I listen to that teenage song, you know, shake it off, shake it off. So I do that now. So every time she leaves my body and she leaves my voice box, I picture that song in my head and I start singing it and I do the actions of shaking it off. And that always seems just to sh quickly get rid of all of her energies out of me and grounds me straight back down. So you're welcome to use that technique too if you find that helps or use your own one. That's fine. Um... She likes to challenge me daily and she's taught me to open up my mind but at the same time open up my heart because here on earth we even open up our minds and we're all into the science and all into the maths and all into logic and we go 100% into that but at the same time we're not opening our heart. So, and then there's others that close down the logic and work with the other side of our brain, the intuition. And so we open our heart to understand all the intuition and compassion and love and grace. But then we don't use the logical mind at the same time. And people says, oh, you know, you always follow your heart. And then other people say, oh, think with your head. So it's very confusing because there's so many different programs out there. But she's told me to open your heart, you have to open up your mind and you have to open up your intuition. That's the three. That's the trinity here within your physical body. So as soon as you get those three in complete balance, again, balance is a very big word with them. Um, then you will be able to activate your own light body. So it's a part of the process. How she's typically portrayed in art. So video blog number 13, which is still Isis Speaks. A continuation from the last one. So she's also going on about um, people are very attracted and the new trend again now is Audrey Hepburn. 
and she said this is because she has placed her en energy signature within this lady and um, people are now getting revived by her energy so there's a big uh, people are coming back to her energy wanting to read about her and pictures about her and feeling her energy once more um, she's definitely filled with a lot of grace sophistication fashion sense um, inner power and in, in inner knowing about her like she knows who she is and she knows what she does and she knows what she looks good in and she's really bringing out the mother energy uh, where we've been focusing a lot on the maiden energy in past years we're actually now going into the maiden energy and finding ourselves again through our own inner power and our own inner strength um, so she's working a lot with figures and with people um, some passed over and some still with us, but bringing back in that energy for us so we can relate to this maiden energy that we're going through right now. Um, she also keeps flashing me the finks and its feet and she's telling me one feet, one foot of the finks. Um, she just corrected me then as she does. <laughs> Um, she's telling me that one foot is definitely got um, Thoth's energy about it. There's some written scrolls there of Thoth that they will find in a secret chamber, in a secret room. Um, she's also telling me the other part of the scrolls, because that's only like part A, part B of the scrolls is in the Lion Island at, um, at the Central Coast at Gosford. And that will have the part B when we're ready to acknowledge part B and to work with part B, it will be found and it will become available for us. And people will start working with that energy as well. And she said she helped him with writing that and it's got some of her knowledge and some of her rituals and some of her power within it as well. Um, so both of them will be found and she said both everybody on earth will know about them and will work the people who will choose to tap into that knowledge will work with that knowledge she's also going on about the aboriginals because osiris was the first aboriginal and she was the first female from the star beings even though he was a star being as well and the aboriginal legends talk of that that they've come from the stars and their original star beings um, she, he took on more of the Aboriginal role and made the name Aboriginal and made the people and followed that line where she kind of made more of the other line of the humans. So they both got different names, uh, both different DNA and of course together they had children that had two different star beings, different DNA as well. So there's quite a mixture here of alien DNA on Earth. Um, but she keeps going on that the women and which she was involved with as well or her daughters who followed the Aboriginal line became the flowers and the feathers and his line became the reptilians and uh, became, they're telling me there's four, she keeps going on about four, um, became the other line. Um, and so together they would all work as one, but they all couldn't crossbreed or, you know, they had to try and keep those DNA lines pretty pure. Didn't always work. Of course, there was the rebel ones that uh, would crossbreed with each other. So that's how a different generation of DNA came out all together. Um, she's telling me that the men uh, would make the pathways but the women would do the song lines. So again, that was in perfect balance. And the women would tell the men how to create <laughs> the pathways and where they were to go from the song lines. The song lines was the, the anchoring of the energy. And then the pathways were the earthly energy that would come from the ethel energy that they created so they would know exactly where to go to create the pathways to go to the next tribe to the next part to sacred spots to sacred energies to bore rings being off them to ceremonial grounds um, very important locations for the aboriginal people um, so she said it's very important in this time that women and men have to anchor 
the ag energy back here in Australia. So every little location that you go to and you feel like it could be lacking in some energy or it just doesn't feel right, pull out the ank, do some work with it and get those song lines reconnected there by singing a song through the ank. Um, whatever song pops into your head, whatever comes through, I know it sounds crazy and, and you could start going off into a trance with it, yes. Listen to what pops into your intuition, listen to what pops into your head, which will be connected to the heart, and sing a song through that ank or speak some words through that ank. And as soon as you do that, that vibration of the ank will go through the lines, reconnect all the lines, and bring back in balance back onto the earth. And so it's not just only important in Australia, it can be done all over the world. Um, but it is important to bring back and anchor back, ground that ank energy back down here uh, because we've lost it with um, all the things that we've done to Mother Earth. We've destroyed all the song lines, we've destroyed all the borrowings, we've destroyed all the pathways, we've destroyed everything. But they can still be there. Yes, they might have to go through buildings. Yes, they might have to go through houses and everything else. Um, but we can still have it there in a spiritual form, in a spiritual vibration. It doesn't have to be physically there as a pathway, but it can be spiritually there as an energy current running through. So she said that is very important to do, and that's one of my miss missions with my crystal skull, is to balance and align um, all of these energy lines, not just the song lines, not just the pathways, but also rainbow serpents energy line and then the dragon line and of course then the seahorse line, which is interesting enough, the seahorse is the juvenile form of rainbow serpent, so to me that's the maiden. And then you've got rainbow serpent, which is the mother and the creator and the new birth and and uh, everything like that, so that's the mother line of Isis. And then you've got the dragon which goes through China and Tibet and all the, those sort of countries. That is the crone line. So they, again, everything comes in three in the trinities. So we have to work with those energy lines, but bring in the female to those lines. Get it now? Yeah. <laughs> um, she's also telling me a lot, which was in the last blog, about a lot of females being in hospital. And that has come out even more this week. Like I've heard of so many friends in hospital and so many women suffering. A lot of women are wanting to go home at the moment. And my angels came through and said, said to me, that's okay that they want to go home, but their missions aren't complete. <laughs> They're still here for more things. And so when they do that and complete their mission, then they will be allowed to be sent home. But until then, they, they're, they're here for a little while longer, unfortunately, for those ones who want to go. Um, so there's a lot happening there. Um, so she told me to create a healing temple um, so I could put all these women friends that I have and clients that I have that are, are in hospital and who others that are suffering at home and put them on a those that granite uh, marble healing bowl that I can see in my third eye. Excuse me for a moment. But stop it. Um, and that, sorry, my female dog <laughs> wants to have a say and wants to have a piece. My male dogs aren't barking, but my female one is. So take that as a confirmation. Um, and I had to put pink scarves over them. I had to teach them about self-love and self-worth and tell them it's okay to want to go home, but you have to complete what you have to do down here first and then they will let you go home. So because they're not 100% on their mission and they're trying, but they're not, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, um, you know, that is causing up physical misalignments within the body and they have to learn how to adjust and to get their physical body back on par and, um, and then they'll be able to complete their missions here because they, they so want their light body. They're missing their light body, um, but they have to stay in the physical body and then introduce that light body quite slowly and activate it quite slowly back into them. So then they are ready to adjust to the energy of the light body. Um, so I took them all into the temple of Isis um, that's out there in the ethical or uh, ethereal 
realms and I did a massive healing for them. Um, so I'm hoping that will help them with their physical body to get back grounded within the physical and know what they have to do for those physical ailments that they have. So I send out all my healing and all my blessings to all of these females and I send them so much love and the angels are continually channeling all about them um, and giving me messages to try and help them. So that's what I've been called to do last night. Um, also, she keeps going on about the eye of Horus or the eye of Ra. She's saying Horus is her son, so her energy is definitely in the eye of Ra and eye of Horus as well. She said it has the female counterpart to it. It has the male counterpart to it. It has the penis and it has the vagina or the womb. And it's about connecting the male and the female together. But she says it's also one important thing that people miss with it. And she wants to introduce that right now. And I did do a thing of the Eye of Ra presentation. But she's come through at a later date to give me this channeling. <laughs> and I'm not doing another one. So I'm adding it in here. She says it's about taking a good look at yourself. And not through the eyes of others. But through your own higher self. And turning that third eye, this one here that we look through psychically, instead of looking through it at everybody else and seeing other situations and doing readings for everybody else and using that ability for readings and for guidance, it's to turn it back around and have a look at yourself. How often do we use that third eye to look back at ourselves and to see our aspects and our personality and our own guidance and what we need to help to activate that light body within us. So she said it's about using that, your gift of psychic ability, to turn it back onto yourself and go, what do I need to enhance myself? And what is my mission and what is my goals? Instead of reading for everybody else and giving out all the information, to give the information back to yourself. Of course, we pick up little tokens and little snippets in any reading and we go, oh, they could be talking about us there. Oh, I should take that advice. I should practice what I preach. Mm. But actually going into a huge deep meditation and turning that third eye to look in. But how you do that is you get the egg and where the womb is, the big circular bit, is turning that up onto your third eye and looking through it. And then seeing what you see about yourself and your own self-worth and your own self-love. And she said through that, you will get tools and you'll get help of how to use that and correctly for you. And then how to use it correctly for Mother Earth. Later on in this presentation, she gives us a lot of tools and spiritual tools to working with the ank and working with her energy and rituals and how to invoke her and her name and her signature and her energy she gives us so many tools of how we can connect in with her but also how to connect in with that ank and how to anchor it within us and in our heart and in our mind being the third eye connect us straight into the brain and how to work with it on an earthly level for alignments as well so this is a quite a big presentation I hope you get a lot out of it. I hope you will be spurred on to work with Isis's energy just like I do. Um, I work with a lot of different spiritual energies. She's just one of them and I do enjoy my time and I do make time to tap in with her because I personally get so much out of it and I hope you have as well. Angel blessings or maybe I should say Isis blessings. See you later. Isis's energy.
using Isis's energy as a spiritual tool. The morning prayer of awakening. One great spiritual tool that we do have available to us right now is the Isis Oracle. It um, can be bought at any good spiritual shop um, or new age shop. And you can use this card on sacred sites or for daily readings or for clients who are reading for the clients that are dealing with a lot of female issues. You can use them for healings. And place them along the body or on chakra areas or in people's auras. Um, they have an, a hundred and one different uses you can use them for. You can make essences on them by putting a bottle on top of a card that you want to work with. You can meditate with each card. Um, you could just read the book and get some more information about Isis and her energy. But what I love is on the deck of cards, as you can see, and on the book, is um, Isis there, but have a look at the two figures on the left and the right, one upside down and one upright. Don't they look very Aboriginal? The Ankh, which is the half of the Ankh, which what both of them are, but that one looks like a space creature or an Aboriginal glyph. Healing with Isis, a healing prayer you can use to help with the healing abilities for remote healing. Using the cornucopia, you can fill it with whatever you like. You could have a basket with all your abundance or with flowers or with fruit or with grain or with rice, with your crystals, anything you choose to put in that represents the cornucopia. I use it for abundance prayers and to bring in energy and to focus energy and it's a great tool to have around when you're invoking Isis in um, as she helps with abundance and she helps to um, ground the energies in when I'm using this tool. You can also use her hieroglyph name and um, have that on your wall and call her in by using this name. And you can also channel information by using this hieroglyph as well. Another great spiritual tool is the Egyptian birth sign book, which you can use to get a better understanding of while you're here and what your purpose is and how you connect that to Isis's energy and how she wants you to achieve spiritual goals in your life. Um, so a very good book to purchase to also help you connect in with her and what your purpose is together. So I was channeled a few years ago to make the ink and um, I made one and painted it gold and put crystals on it and the eye of Ra or the eye of Horus and glitter and feathers and all assortment of different things. Um, I've been experimenting it with the last couple of years, um, learning and invoking and asking how I use this mysterious tool. Uh, one thing I use it for is I stand it up near me so I can look out through the hole of the ink. And to me, it completely lifts the veil. Um, you can see across to the other side quite clearly without having to prepare yourself for lifting the veil and calling them in. It's like a direct tool to a higher source. You can also use it as a healing modality. And if you see a shadow area within a person's body, you can put the top of the ank where the hole is over that shadow area and it will automatically go to reharmonize the body and align the body. Um, it's also a very good tool if you're working outside or walking around nature. If you hit the egg on the ground three times, uh, it sends out a vibration out through the ground and it gets rid of any snakes or insects or anything that could come across your way on that path. It just seems to clear a path and remove it. It can also be used on sacred sites for aligning the energy and the song lines and the pathways 
and just bringing in Isis's energy to clear away any destruction or residue or anything negative that could be around on those sites. Um, as I said, I'm still experimenting. They're the ones I mainly use it for, but I'm still learning more and more information of its tools and rituals that can be done with it also. You can also make a Isis altar with your crystals and any little statues that you have and anything you would want to put around your altar. Um, here is with Rainbow Serpent and with Isis and creating uh, the wings of Isis coming out from Rainbow Serpent and them adjusting to each other's energy and transferring of information. Um, I sit here and I do my channeling work uh, with this altar on the table and I draw in the energy of both of these um, entities and the crystals, of course, around it just amplifies the effect. So here is the Garden of Eden, which is in Australia, in Kings Canyon of all places. Funny how it's called Kings Canyon, I think it's a coincidence. Um, this is the place of uh, creation of where Isis and Osiris lived. And it's funny, it's also called the Garden of Eden, which is the biblical reference for the place of creation. Um, this is where I feel somewhere off here, uh, more towards Ayers Rock Way, um, or just south of Ayers Rock Way is where I get um, the Temple of Isis and the Temple of Osiris and the House of Ra and the Egyptian civilization here, another one, we've got many in Australia, but another one is here, but this is the birthing place of it all. I get a very strong pull to this area, which is near Kings Canyon, which is near the Garden of Eden, uh, the possible tomb site and possible underground civilization within this mountain and rock and tunnels that I see all connect to different tombs. I'm planning a trip uh, very soon to go here and to see what I pick up and I feel, but I feel psychically I'm very connected to this section right here. The Triple Isis Goddesses Temples. The Temple of Isis in Uluru that I have visions of and that I have drawn sacred geometry on a graph around Australia and that leads me to a place near Uluru. Um, and this one is the, called the Maven Temple, hasn't been found yet. But there was an article in a paper that I found was quite interesting. I think a lot of the details are wrong and I think it's been pro proven to be a hoax. But I also know that there are people using the radar technology in Uluru at the moment and finding things. So I think it was a paper put out there to spike some interest. And here's what the article wrote about. Again, I know personally of a person who is finding civilizations out near Uluru and Alice Springs Way. I can't give out the exact location, of course, and it hasn't been confirmed, of course. I haven't been on the site and I haven't seen anything of proof. But the people that I do know are working with the radar technology and are finding things and I hope to see proof of this come to light very soon. This is a picture in the article which to me looks nothing like what I am seeing uh, for the civilization. I think this was just thrown in there to give people a visual but it's not the one at Uluru. It doesn't resonate with me at all for that. I think this is a fake picture. Um, but as I said, I do know there is a civilization there and I do know it is Egyptian. 
again more in the article what he claims i did bring up this professor at that university and no no such professor has ever worked there and that name is not an actually archaeologist or a professor um so it was just a very fake uh thing but it was around the time that i was making the sacred geometry maps of australia and so I know there's people in the ether that do listen to my channelings and do report things and try to get us off path or maybe get us on path. Um, so I just thought it was such um, timing that this article came out, especially when this is what I've been talking about psychically uh, for a few months now. And my team and I, as I said, have been working on sacred geometry over implanting that over Australia and finding where all those lines meet up and we knew that they would be sacred spots. Um, so I think they're just trying to get us ready, but it actually backfired in their face when it became a huge hoax. And it wasn't talked much about in Australia, it wasn't on the news, it wasn't in the papers, it wasn't anything. It just came out on this World Press website um, but no one in Australia really took it seriously, unfortunately, because they should. They claimed they found bodies there and everything else, but this is definitely a picture I, uh, I feel of an Incan uh, or a NASCAR uh, um, burial grounds. I don't think it's got to do with Australia at all. We have found skeletons here and we've found unusual hybrid skeletons here in Australia. So this picture isn't one of them, this just doesn't feel right for me for being a part of Australia. But in the tombs and the temples that I am seeing that are here, there have been bodies found in other tombs. And I'm sure when we actually get to the digging of the site and exploring of the site that I am seeing in my third eye, I'm sure there will be some bodies, but I don't see them buried like this, like in the fetal position at all. I see them actually in sarcophaguses and in huge tombs of three layers and, and very much like Caragong and not, um, not this. <laughs> and this was also claimed to come off the Dick site and I know for one they are finding artifacts on the Dick site that I have talked about before. Um, but I don't think this is one of them. This looks like it's in a museum piece <laughs> and it's um looks like a museum to me. I, I feel like it's in a museum. It's not, it's not what they found on site. Uh, I'll give it a few years and once they start getting thoroughly into the digs and finding more things, uh, the truth about this civilization, this Egyptian civilization near Uluru, not saying their exact location, will come about and everyone in Australia will be pleasantly surprised that there is one. Um, so I think this article is just paving the way, getting us ready to open our minds to the possibility that one could be found very soon, hopefully, um, and that you will hear about it and know about it and see it and it'll be all over the news. And, um, and hopefully by the people I know who are currently doing all the work, um, I'll hopefully I'll be able to be led on site and um, go around and try and find the Temple of Isis for myself and with my team, uh, which I'm very looking forward to doing because I know it's there. I feel in and communicate and be there every day psychically, um, but to hop on there physically uh, will be completely dream, dream come true for me and for my team. Um, so yeah, let's keep the energy out there that it exists and they're working on it and it's going to come to light very soon and that um, spiritual people will be allowed on to connect all the lines and clear away any of the old residue and make it easier for the dig site to happen. Um, so let's all send it love and energy because I know it's there. Let's bring it forth into reality. Temple number two. Another great tool is this is the temple of Isis. Um, you can channel in with this photo. You can look into the water and get lost in the water. 
you can go into a meditation and walk through the temple and go to her sacred areas and go to her tombs and go to her um, medicine rooms and you can just sit in there and completely walk around and just feel her energy in every single room and feel her presence all around you. Um, so this is another deeper tool that you can use with meditation or with astral traveling or remote viewing, whichever tool you would like to use. Uh, but this one comes in very handy when I want to go in and find out about her magic side and the things she used to do with healing and magic and um, rituals and ceremonies. I use this picture to channeling. The window of hieroglyphs uh, looking out to the water, which is amplifying it all, is in Isis's tomb. And they're huge glyphs here on the tombs, which I, Isis, Horus, and Osiris. And the lion thinks two of them out the front of the temple. And temple number three, the crone. Not much left of the Crone Temple, there's only a few blocks uh, of stone remaining. It was once was a very grand temple, but they've used all the blocks to build things, other things, and they've destroyed the temple. Um, but this is all that's left, but if it still has the residue, it still has the energy, still has the signature. So you're welcome to meditate on this photo and see what you get also. Other Isis temples that are around and have been created, but are they're not part of the triple. Delios. Again with the beautiful columns. Not much left, but a few remaining bits. Campus Matisse. In the Temple of Isis. Temple of Isis in Pompeii. Again with the beautiful columns and a few more structures. But this is a very old photograph. I also have my own um, tablet that I bought and there's a weird story behind this because when I bought it there was a lady in the shop where I bought it from and she said to me why am I buying something of Isis and I said because I resonate with her energy and I want to do some work with her and this tablet that I found in the shop I love the gold and I love the pink and it was drawing me um, to it. And she said, why would you buy anything at ISIS with this time we're in at the moment with all the terrorists? And I said, the terrorists and ISIS, the goddess, are two completely different things. And uh, But she couldn't get that. She thought that they were using her energy and her name and using her a part of their regime and I said yes they could be tapping into her energy of course being a goddess of destruction and chaos um, but she's not granting them her powers or granting them her magical ways they're just using that female line to give them power since they put all females down and don't educate their females as such um, not all of them, but some of them. And so they're trying to balance out their very male energy by calling it that name. But as we learnt later on with more news coverage and with more education, it's not actually ISIS, it's ISIL. So um, I just thought it was funny people's reaction at that time when I was buying things that so were for ISIS, the goddess. But, you know, you do get that out in society. People can assume whatever they want to, but that doesn't mean that's the whole purpose of it. 
There's also another spiritual tool called the Knot of Isis and you can hold this in your hand and to me I love how it's a snake intertwined. Um, it shows me that Rainbow Serpent and Isis have definitely got some sort of a spiritual connect connection or on the, on the same spiritual council level. I know Ozzy talks about the Egyptian Nine being within him, the Council of Nine. Um, so I'm sure Isis is a part of that council and that's why she comes through and talks with me. Um, but I use this to connect in with her energy also. I also use this kind of an amulet as protection. Um, there's a lot of um, angry Egyptian entities that can come around as well when you work with her energy who try to stop you from connecting into the female energy line. Um, so I find when I wear this or hold this or have it close to me, it stops those negative lines from coming in and trying to stop what we're doing or try and stop the communication or bringing in full spirits who will want to muck around with you. So the knot of Isis is so complicated with sacred geometry and it's so defined in its energy. It's really wonderful to work with. So if you need protection or you need how help with invoking, um, I do recommend the knot of Isis for further work. In my healing room, I also have a glass cabinet and one of the little nooks in there is my Egyptian area. And every now and then I pull out my different little Egyptian things and sit with it and meditate with it. A lot of crystal pyramids, a lot of gold things, um, of course the ankh and the little Egyptian figurines, a lot of lotus flowers, a lot of pictures of Isis. Um, I just sit here and I just channel away with all of this as well. I open up the glass door and I kind of let all the energy come out and fill up the room. Um, and when I'm lying in my massage chair, I let the Egyptian energy just flush over me and um, flood into me and to do the healing and whatever needs to be done. Um, I'll also call in different magicians and scribes and Isis and, and Osiris and Ra and I'll call in all different entities to come in and to help me uh, if it's spiritual, emotional, physical, mental, whatever is happening. Um, they seem to know exactly what to do and what to put in my head for further help um, with that situation. You've also got um, the dark side of Isis, which all females and males and human beings have, um, is to get in touch with your shadow side and what is all your aspects of your personality that is, with, that is within you. Um, it's called the dark goddess or the black goddess of Isis, um, whatever name you want to call it. It is also another great spiritual tool for tapping in and looking at your shadow side and loving yourself for all of your qualities and for all of your aspects and to just to be open and fluent with it so you can accept and honour yourself and love yourself for being a whole particle and a whole soul and not just the good stuff and your good qualities but you know and to forgive yourself for all of your past wrongdoings and to have spiritual understanding of it all. So I definitely use this picture when I'm trying to tap into the bigger picture. Uh, for things that might seem negative or wrong, I use this to get the spiritual understanding of what it's all about. So then I don't just classify it as a positive or a negative experience, then I can just classify it as an experience, a learning lesson. So the ank anchoring, As I've said on sacred sites, um, I use the Isis cards. 
And when we went to Karagong, my friend um, did the golden anchor out of cardboard for us and we had it in our tent and we took it on sacred site and it was perfect for me to do um, an Isis reading there on site with this. It really drew in the energy and it brought her straight to us and I was able to get a lot of information out of this reading and to use her energy to understand what I was picking up there on the site. Um, so definitely recommend it if you could, you know, cut out a golden ank for yourself and use that in your bedrooms if you would like to have dreams about Isis. Um, you could use it for the readings as a tool for your readings as well. You could also sit on it and meditate on it. You can also put it to your heart and to your third eye. Um, there's so many basic uses you can do for it and hopefully you'll find a whole array of other uses that you can use as well. Egyptian energy rituals. using the Eye of Horus or the Eye of Ra, a part of your rituals. You're welcome to use this photo to tune in, which is the Eye of Horus or Ra that's in Doom in Queensland with the rainbow skull and the wooden snake. Um, you're welcome to channel into that and to draw its energy. You can also call in and invoke her energy and open up your hands and ask her to gift you whatever she would like to gift you as a token of her love. And this is what happened one night when I was invoking her in to a spiritual development class and when I opened my hand there was all these different coloured orbs that were in my hand. And we were able to look at it for about a minute or two and then the orbs just disappeared. 
um, so she might want to gift you something, she might have something very special she wants to give you, or maybe she wants to impart some knowledge and implant it into your head, maybe she has an answer to a question you would like to know, um, so by just sitting quietly and invoking her energy in, um, you're welcome to do that and see what gift and ask her if she has a gift for you. But please remember too to gift her back something as well. And if you're handy enough and know someone who is handy, you can build yourself a pyramid. Um, for Isis, she likes to have a gold pyramid with a gold cap and four pillar crystals either side of it to the north, south, east and west and a little altar into the middle. Um, she likes you to sit in there and to have that sacred little area. I have moss in the bottom of mine. And I can sit on that little stool in the middle, a gold stool or a gold little table. I can sit on the floor and ride in there or channel in there. Um, I find with the gold cap, it seems to concentrate all the energy with inside of that pyramid. And you get surrounded by a swirling effect. And, um, and I just see golden lines going all around me. Um, and here was a picture taken of my little area. sitting and invoking and asking her to show you a confirmation of her being around you or near you. Um, you can pick up orbs when you're falling in her energy and you're just being still and just asking her to come in and to take over your body and to use your voice box and to open your heart to her energy and feeling her vibration come in and settle within you. You can pick up a lot of different things for confirmations when she is around. Creating your own little sanctuary for Isis's energy. Using whatever symbols or tools or crystals or materials, anything that you like that represents her to you and have a little sacred space for her in your house or in your yard um, or a special little rock on the beach that you know is the Isis rock where you can go to. Um, or walking up and down the beach or a sacred river, um, anything that you know where her presence is, is the perfect place. And sit there and just call and meditate and invoke and trance and 
and just pull her energies into you and to create that sacred space just for her. She really loves it. She enjoys people honouring her and respecting her and having time for her energy. So this one is out the front of my yard and um, I have the feminine symbol in it. Um, I also have a rock from Area 51 um, in there as well just to invoke the um, Palladian and Sirius side and the solar deities to come in as well. Um, also dressing up um, with gold also helps me. I like working with the alchemy side of gold when I am meditating with her. So anything you actually are drawn to is absolutely fine. This is in the middle of a medicine wheel um, and so I use it a lot for a lot of my rituals and ceremonies that I do with my groups. Also wearing a peacock feather um, in your hair is another great way to connect with Isis. Um, put them in the back of your head because um, they're connecting up from the crown chakra up to the casual chakra and up to the stellar gateway. Um, this also helps to draw her energy very close to you and the peacock energy actually helps you to settle and be grounded while you're rising through those higher chakra systems. Um, so I do recommend if you want to connect um, using a peacock feather um, is very helpful indeed. And of course, dressing up is always a fun thing to do, especially if you can dress up as Isis. Um, you know, not just for fancy dress parties, but at home, just connecting in with her energy and rituals. Uh, wearing her jewellery uh, really draws you in. Wearing a lot of gold and silver draws you into her energy. Also, another lovely tool is to get lapis lazuli and to grind it up. And then you can use that as eyeshadow on your eyes. You can use that as essence um, to drink, a tiny little bit of that in water. And then um, you can drink that and it goes through your body. Um, just wearing her jewellery connects you in straight away as well. Um, and just having fun with it and finding your childlike side and just enjoying life, uh, feeling like you're her and being a part of her. Um, she laughs and she celebrates along with you and to me she always comes through and makes me feel so youthful um, I feel like my skin gets tighter I feel like my wrinkles go I feel like I've got a lot of bountiful energy um, you know I don't care what I look like I don't care if people laugh at me I'm just so happy to feel like I'm a part of her and with her and I uh, feel like one of her handmaidens that was around her. Um, so definitely, if you can get a hold of a costume, um, get a hold of it. I've always loved to dress up as Cleopatra. I've always loved to dress up as Isis. Um, it's my favourite thing to do, especially when I'm home alone and no one's around and I don't have readings for that day. I just get into costume and I just have fun with the youthful energy that comes into me and um, I spend all day smiling. Here is a nice ritual, a uh, passage of rite you can do to connect in with Isis.
the triple Isis goddess magic is another beautiful ritual and something that most of us are not aware of but um, the three the triple goddess just like the cross the father the son and the holy spirit if you choose to believe that that's what the cross is we've also got the trinity here within the goddess and, and of course within isis so as a maiden um, to me that's new beginnings and that's purity and that's innocence and that's birth and learning so much in that great span of time um, and then you go into the abundant protective magic of mother energy which is the life giver so now you've moved from childhood and teenagers but actually into the mother where you're thinking about children and having children and the nurturing side comes in and the caretaker comes in and the protective mother comes in and we learn so much at that time about other people and what we can do to help others and usually during this time of the triple goddess is we forget about ourselves and Isis keeps telling me that's the time that we should be more focused on ourselves and bringing in the inner magic and sharing it then sharing that inner magic outwards um, and to keep that magic alive within ourselves it's also the time the magic of the mother time is also the time of a lot of sexual energy of course so it's learning how to balance your sexual side and your goddess energy with your human self and your human side and not to let that energy of um, the feminine become so strong and so overpowering but to keep that uh, mother side grounded and honest and loyal and also to allow that sexual to come side to come out when it's supposed to and when it's needed to and when it's appropriate to I'm not saying keep that sexual side in I'm just saying keep it in a nice balance of course we most women know for lack of a better word how to use the pussy power but sometimes we have to come back and just go wait a minute we need to connect in here with the male side of ourselves as well and not just use all of our feminine tools to get what we want or what we think we deserve but know that we can get it all ourselves because we are the triple goddess and we have got all the magic love and abundance within ourselves so to me the magic of the mother um, is it a very important time in women's life because she does learn so much about herself through the process of helping others but that again has to be completely balanced and then you go into the last one which is the crone um, and to me that's the endings and the rebirth so you know who you are through this time and you're happy with yourself and you're happy with your life and you're gracefully getting older and you're happy about that you enjoy the process of getting older and sharing your wisdom and sharing your knowledge and sharing your memories and sharing your soul with people it's also the time where you've learnt all the magic and learnt all the skills and learnt all the ceremonies that work for you and so you become very fine-tuned then at the magic and very fine-tuned with the processes you know that will help your spiritual growth um, and then of course with the ending and the death cycle to me death isn't a bad thing it is just a cycle of rebirth so then you'll go through the light process and you'll go through the death ceremonies but then you'll also go through the rebirthing across to the other side so it's very special you've gone from innocence into motherhood into knowingness and so this triple goddess magic is very special thing to tap into and to tap into your inner child and then tap into your mother side and it doesn't mean you have to have children yourself to understand the mother side of course not every woman has that mother side in it you could mother a cat you could mother your dog you could mother a bird you could mother everybody else's kids you can be a great fantastic auntie and mother your nieces and nephews there's a mother to me doesn't mean your own children it means your nurturing side fully coming out into full being that is the magic of the mother and then the grandmother you go into the crone and then you could be the grandmother and again 
you will still have that nurturing side, but it's not as full on or it's not as dominant in your life. It's one that you can step in and out of very quickly and you have definitely more control as the grandmother aspects of your life and step into that role when you need to and step out of it and go back into you. So I really love working with the triple goddess and especially with Isis's energy from like when she was a maiden and what happened to her as a maiden and then what happened to her as the magic of the mother and then what happened to her when she became older and went into the crone vibration and you'd be surprised when you step into that sort of a meditation and ask for the triple Isis goddess magic to come in what comes through for you and aspects that have happened in your life that she would give you to explain things and to help you to understand it and to see it as your female side showing its inner strength or power or that female side becoming quenched or stepped on and you were angry at yourself for not letting that side come out. So it's a bit of a work here of finding all the balance with it and all again and to just clearly invoke and then work with um, a lot of spiritual tools to clear away some of those old paths or old programs that you don't need. Um, so it's great. It's a, it definitely a really good ritual to help work with and um, and actually get you closer to knowing who she was and what she's about. Again, Isis with the two spiraling snakes going up there, which is the Kulun B and Kulun Gai line. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation of Isis's energy and how you can work with it now a little bit more and give you different tools that hopefully will help you connect in and to have a relationship with Isis like I do and learn so much more about her as you're learning about yourself at the same time. So Isis, blessings to all and uh, I wish you all a good day.